Okay. All right, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Let's get started. All right. Start everything from scratch. People are still coming in. Uh, looks like they just needed to, like, completely fix everything, and I'm not seeing any more issues with desync anywhere. So, all right. Let's get the show on the road. So, this is Friday Night Fights. They're doing something called a soon event. And they are calling this also a war game, specifically. Uh, how it's going to work is it is a sector fight, and it is sequential. So, Op 4 has to be defending their first sector while trying to take Sector 4. Blue 4 trying to hold Sector 4 while they take Sector 4. If, for example, Blue 4 takes Sector 1 here, then Blue 4 will start trying to take Sector 2, whereas Op 4 is going to be defending Sector 2 and then trying to take Sector 1. Uh, and then whoever has more sectors by the end of the game wins. Now, unlike most Friday Night Fights events, this is only going to be... Uh, a three life event rather than a one life event so it's not a full multi-life you can constantly respawn and get back in there you still have a limited amount of lives uh, and this is also going to be a two and a half hour long event uh, so 130 minutes technically but I think they're going to be extending the clock a bit uh, to push things out regardless uh, both factions for op 4 we have a Russian Spetsnaz faction and for blue 4 we have a uh, United States Marine Corps faction but otherwise, we also have some uh, nice billboards to show off everything here. Um, again, the soon events are what they do on the weekends, and then they're calling this one specifically War Games. Otherwise, looking over at the Op 4's side, let's go ahead and grab mission details here. So again, they're going to be taking sectors and whatnot. But render distance is going to be 3 kilometers. Fortify points are going to be 100 for either side. Uh, the rule with that, if you want to look at the specifics, you can use the exclamation point mission command, and you can see uh, basically like just a full breakdown of everything. Um, safe zone drops in five minutes, so it looks like they have selected their assets here. I'll get over that in a second. But both sides had a uh, grouping of things to take, and it's dropping in five minutes. So I just want to take a note of that KA-52, and then I need to go look at Blue Force spawn. Uh, because they also had a choice of something, and they went with an AH-6 Little Bird. All right, I'll get to that in a second as uh, the forces deploy here. But otherwise, with that, uh, going back to the briefing here, both sides have 15 minutes to fortify uh, their sectors, and they can only fortify internally in the sector itself, so it's not something that they can keep doing throughout the mission. Otherwise, notes here. First test battle for FNF Soon War Games. <coughs> Feedback is appreciated after the game. If you encounter any problems in game, use the admin tool, which is under escape. Commander benefits need to be chosen with the first 10 minutes of the game, given uh, gives five minutes to sort items in the boxes. So there's a box of gear they could also choose, but uh, the two helicopters that we see uh, were part of those commander benefits. Area of operations, small and large villages surrounded by farmland and forest. Date and game is June 9th, 2024. Data time in game is 3:10 uh, a.m., so it's starting in the morning. It'll get brighter as the operation continues, but it's a full moon out, so it's not super super dark. Uh, weather: light morning fog will dissipate fairly fast. Few to none clouds and little very uh, very little wind. The stream Whipperoo goes all through the map and crosses the objectives multiple places, uh, which I think they mean the uh, river. But nonetheless, uh, saying that there's going to be choke points for. Uh, either side to have to potentially cross. Otherwise, FNF rules apply, um, but this is a breakdown just so we all know how everything's going to go. Also, I just realized my, my microphone is definitely quieter today, so I apologize for that. Uh, if it's too quiet, let me know, but I'm noticing that it's not bumping up as high as it should be. But regardless, uh, you are allowed to lone wolf as long as you are following orders by Command HQ, so people are allowed to run off on their own. Only one squad is allowed to spawn per sector within the first 15 minutes at safe start, so... You know, uh, one side has three sectors, so, you know, one squad per uh, there, and then the rest can be fielded in through their uh, HQ positions outside of the uh, play zone. Helicopters are allowed to leave the border play area no more than 500 meters from the edge and not towards the enemy base. Basically, they can't just circle around and try to spawn camp each other. It's not allowed to build on top of buildings. Uh, reinforcing inside or blocking windows is fine. Uh, pathways and entries, though, cannot be blocked or hindered. Um, mic's good, but it just makes little bump sounds. All right. Uh, that was just me adjusting it personally to, um, because the optimal mic position is, uh, two, usually your middle and your second finger away from your mouth, so I was just calibrating that. 
Because, again, sometimes this microphone is, uh, it randomly shifts uh, quieter or louder between streams, even though I don't touch any of the settings because we have a full-on audio box. But the bumping was just me adjusting it. But thank you for letting me know. Regardless, uh, combat engineers can only build within the first 15 minutes, as I was saying. Camping or attacking enemy bases is not allowed. Op 4 spawn or blue 4 spawn. And it's not allowed to steal enemy radios or uniforms, but you can steal enemy weapons. Uh, and I think you can also technically steal enemy vehicles as well, but only uh, groups members under hotel, which we'll get to the roster in a second, can fly. And then members in Gulf, which are the vehicle crews, can drive uh, armored vehicles. Otherwise, looking over at Blue 4 here. So um, actually, we'll start with Op 4 since we're over here on that side already. Loadout for them is Russian Spetsnaz. So they're going to be rocking AK-74s, RPG-7s, RPKs with 45-round banana mags. Uh, Strel, not Strel, Iglas for their AA and then PP-2000. Uh, the commander has, we see a bunch of inventory boxes. They've also uh, selected the KA-52 with a rocket pylon and a GAU-19 pylon, basically for HE support, I believe. It also has a cannon right there. Uh, but we can actually see some of that munition right here. Now. It's 48 months. What am I doing with my money and life, fail fish? MG Hopkey, man. That backhanded compliment. I appreciate the resub at 48 months. That gets you a Diamond Lance Corporal badge, but ah, uh, you're breaking my heart. Nonetheless, hope you keep joining the operations. Hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario. Otherwise, we see uh, all the options that they could have potentially taken with ammo boxes and whatnot, but basically... The commanders had the choice between two additional helicopters. One is AT, one is HE, and then they could either get another tank or they could get another IFV. So I believe Op4 chose the HE helicopter uh, because I don't see any AGM capabilities on that. So they're going to be trying to utilize their helicopter to fight infantry, uh, whereas Blue4 chose the AT option. But we'll get to them in a second. Otherwise, Op4 have a full set of triple R vehicles for their base. Uh, full rearm of a helicopter or a tank takes three minutes. Fun fact. Uh, my settings keep getting set here. But otherwise, we've got uh, multiple open UAZ transport cars, two Dishka cars, eight closed transports. So 16 transport UAZs total. Those can carry seven people. Each uh, three T90s, and we have a very nice selection of uh, <laughs> tank rounds for that vehicle, so that should be quite nice to see. Three standing PKM turrets, two MI8 heavies, but these are just meant to be transport. They don't have any actual rocket pods, but they do have the gun uh, turrets on the side. It looks like it is going to be only in the front, the left, and then the back right corner. So there's a few blind spots on that vehicle. But otherwise, going back, we've got uh, three standing cord statics, eight Camaz trucks, three KA-60 transports, four Gazes, three BTR-80 Alphas, and three BMP-2D models, uh, which means they can't be amphibious. Otherwise, Blue 4 being a Marine kit here, uh, we see that they've selected an AH-6 Little Bird variant with AGM capability, but we'll go ahead and go and look at their spawn to clarify that. So we see the AH-6 over here. She's equipped with two AGMs to basically hit vehicles in the GAU-19 pod. We got some of their other helicopters here and all their other vehicles chosen. We see their transport and their uh, armored vehicles as well. But going back into the mission details, so they've got their own full set of triple R. They got three MH6 transport little birds, which can carry, you know, about a squad around the AO. Three standing 50 cows, three Bradley IFVs, three scoped 240s with LCANs. That's an interesting advantage. Uh, three main battle tanks, uh, the M1A1, actually A2, excuse me. Uh, two MRAPs, we've got two M240 Humvees, and then multiple different uh, Humvees that uh, some are six-man transport, some are four, and then they've got their own transport trucks, and then three LAV-25s. What I do find interesting is the LAV and the um, BTR-80 Alpha are both amphibious, so they can easily cross the river, whereas the Bradley... I don't think the Bradley is amphibious. Let me... I think there's actually... Yeah, can it float? False. So I know the BMP-2D, if it has the D next to it, it means it's up-armored a bit more, but it can't cross water. So that's an interesting mix there. And then they've got uh, CH-53s with GAU-21 turrets on the rear uh, to try to give them an armed transport helicopter as well. So that is quite interesting. Nonetheless, we, if we look in the back, you can see that silly little 50 cal, but it's got some pretty uh, 
big blind spots in the front that can be engaged. Otherwise, let's go ahead and look on what sides we have. This is a 120 player event, three lives apiece, so we'll just have to see how things go. But Kiri is going to be Blue Force Ground Commander. Ember Rose is going to be, uh, appears to be the 2IC. Pig leading Alpha with Cloak as the Medic. Alpha 1 has Zero leading Bonk, Classified, Astro, and Blaze. Bravo being led by Bates with Anara as a Marksman. Iqbal, Franz, Kabubi, Face, Steve, and Harrington under Bravo 1. Bravo 2 has Lalman, Just Na, Sancho, Chaos, and Whale. Delta has Primal Reacher leading with John Miller as a Medic. Delta is usually the Medium Machine Gun crew, so we've got Medium Machine Guns. This is going to be the 240 Bravo, but Nanard is leading Peter, Falkley, Mail, and Nekosfer. Uh, and then we have no Delta 2. Interesting. So Echo is going to be an anti-tank team with a medium anti-tank launcher. Probably a Maz. But if they're Marine Corps, it's probably a SMA, but they usually alternate between the weapons. If we actually look at the mission details, sometimes it gets listed. Um, okay, it's going to be a Maz here. I didn't go over Blue Force weaponry either. Whoops. So m4 platforms 249s at4s for the single shot disposable uh they've got a few different choices of weaponry we have the mark 11 uh, as their marksman rifle they have a bipod listed they've got uh, stainers of course and then they also have special forces groups which I, it's a six-man team i'm gonna have to see where it is specifically listed but we have uh, at4s in or excuse me um, m72 laws probably for those special forces groups as well uh, nonetheless, continuing thing, so Echo 1. These might be the Special Forces groups, actually. But their weapons are suppressed and whatnot. I actually don't know what all the Echoes are. Because usually Echo is a medium anti-tank team, but here I, I genuinely have no idea. But we've got for Echo 1, Dreek, Anderson, Cool Breeze. Echo 2 has Martin, Wheaton, and Patriot. Echo 3 has Cosmonaut, Fritz, and Warwick. Echo 4 has Fist, Miller, and Bjornsson. Boxtrot is going to be Jojo. This is a special forces team because they have the different weaponry. So Jojo, Mioen, Sergio, Ludd, and Wes. And then Golf is a vehicle crew for the tank. Sam, Lolo, and Alexander taking one tank. Feel free to start moving out now. So they're starting the game off. Uh... Lobot, Killer, Bagel, Bandit, and Talvid are taking a B, uh, Bradley, excuse me. And then the third vehicle crew is taking another Bradley. Now, I don't think the vehicles respawn. Uh, so they're just using them, and then when they die or lose it, they come back and they grab a different one. So everyone's assets are limited. Both sides start with three tanks, three IFVs, and three APCs with auto cannons. Regardless... G Legs and SL Dream at taking the armed helicopter under Hotel 1. Hotel 2 has the transport little bird. And then Delta 2 down here, which is just another part of the machine gun team, has uh, Gulag Man, Ajax, Mika, and Shrimp. Bravo, meanwhile, I don't see leadership for Bravo anywhere. I don't see a command. That's kind of interesting. There it is. All right, so Nemesis is going to be company commanding with a sniper rifle, T5000. Interesting. Otherwise, starting from the top, we'll just go through the entire list here. So... Hold on, I just want to turn my render distance up. So Bravo has NASA, Kremit, Lolo, Depso, Block, If No Main, Bank, Six Mean Wonder. Malin is part of an Echo crew with Wise and Yanni. Uh, yeah, they are equipped with uh, an AT stick. So I guess Echo 1 has the AT, and I don't know what the other Echo teams are for. But regardless, Echo 2 has Bibo, uh, Yannick Pease, and uh, Kexel. Uh, Snaja Pair is alone in a tank under Golf 1. Golf 2 has Semper, Azariah, and Nick riding in a BMP-2D. Uh, only Bone and Timo appear to be a part of the helicopter crew controlling the KA-52 with that HE rocket pod. Uh, Foxtrot has Leonard, Katz, Dobbs, Cullis, Nightmare, and Breacher. They're going to be the Special Forces team with those tricked-out AK-74s. Uh, they also have explosive charges and whatnot, so they're meant to be a shock infantry team. Otherwise, Echo 4 has uh, Jep. Bullslaw and uh, Kashik. Uh, Hotel 2 just has a single pilot. It's going to be Nicholas. I think, again, Hotel is going to be very heavy on the reinserts here, but we actually start seeing them rendered in. Delta 2 has Halibrad, Revili, Mito, Nuclear Moose, and Lurch. Delta 1 has only Aaron and Nicholas together. Echo 3 has Stadi and Stereo. Alpha has Renly, Thomas, Goose, Fawns, Nuzzy, Henry, Bursty, T, and Murphy. Golf 3 has Esmond and Stab. Bravo 1 only has Tackleberry. Delta only has Carbiner. And then Pierce is alone in Alpha 2. So, yeah, one roster super clean, and then the other roster is completely disjointed. <laughs> But otherwise, Op4, it looks like they have opted to not start with any forces spawned in their sectors, which means they haven't done any fortifications to them. Meanwhile, Blue Force started with one group. It looks like Delta in this sector. Uh, we'll see if they 
are able to build any more fortifications, but both sides might not opt to do it. What I am curious about, though, is Delta, we've got the M240 pods with Elkin scopes. Do the PKPs over at Op4 have scopes? I don't think they do. That you would think is not that big of an advantage. Yeah, it's just a high scope, but no, um, a high static with no scope. I'm gonna be honest, those magnifiers on those optics literally turn those statics into sniper rifles because they have no stability concerns. You literally just line it up, you sight it, and then you pull the trigger and there's no recoil. And you can just hold that bitch down. So if you have someone just sitting still and you fire, you're gonna get a kill, which is always quite interesting. But nonetheless, we do have a helicopter deploying all the way in the back line here. Now, there's two ways to win this event. It's if you take, you know, more sectors than the opponent, or if you somehow completely wipe your opponent over the course of, you know, two and a half hours, which I'm not sure we're going to get to. Uh, and it might only be two hours, actually, so the half hour might have gone into some of the setup time, but regardless, three lives per means you have a grand total of 180 lives per side because every player gets three lives, if you want to think of it that way. So, 180 people fighting for sectors, I mean, that's going to be a tough call, but there is a lot of, there's at least four kilometers between the sectors. I wish they were a bit closer, because uh, otherwise it's just giving a lot of time for both sides to really set themselves up here. But Blue 4 seems to be a bit more mobile with their sectors compared to Op 4. Op 4 seeming to still have a good chunk of their stuff in their border here compared to Blue 4, which has most of their stuff moved out, but we'll just have to see who is more aggressive. Op 4 did put an entire squad down to potentially start moving to the first sector they need to hit, but we'll see how things go. And yeah, Charlotte, eventually we'll get to that conversation for the 24-hour Daisy stream. You just gotta give me a little bit of time to get all that set, because I haven't had the time. Regardless. We also see Blue 4 being mobile with their repair vehicle, so they're taking their Triple R out of their base. That's an interesting call. And Op 4 still starting to mobilize. We've got some forces now starting to reach their sectors. Let's go ahead and look at the first Op 4 sector. So Sector 1, the first thing Blue 4 needs to take to start encroaching on Op 4 territory. It's a nice little hamlet. We have a good amount of sheds in the area. But just as a note, you will start taking the sector when you have a number advantage in the sector. Uh, so if Blue 4 were to put one person in the sector right now, it would start counting down. But let's say Op 4 had five people in a building. If six Blue 4 members entered from the other side of the sector, the timer would start counting down. Another interesting thing to know is that if you start counting the sector down, let's say it's a 60-second timer, and you're able to count down 30 of those seconds before... Uh, let's say you lose a guy or two, lose a number advantage, and it stops the timer. Unlike normal Friday night fight rules where the timer resets, it's not going to reset for these sectors. It's going to continue, according to the rules, where it left off. So that's an interesting one. But yeah, here's a shot of the PKP turret, and uh, you can see that it does not have a scope on it. You gotta love the little marketing they have for their operations, though. But yeah, the squads had an option to spawn in this area. But look at this. So Blue 4 driving a Humvee by. Where Op 4 do have a group dismounted. And I'm not sure anyone's looking out the window to see that Op 4 element right there. But they definitely stand out in that open field. But it looks like Echo here is an AA crew. So I'm imagining every Echo team is either an AT or an AA team. At this point. So we might see two AT teams, two AA teams just running around as three-man groups. You also have Sergio running up here. And again, in this event, you are allowed to basically run out and lone wolf as long as you're ordered to do so. And what's that? They're equating the Humvees to UAZs on the ratio. They... Uh, the BTR is equated to LAVs for this one in terms of that. So... They're actually doing a little bit of a better job for the balance. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> Normal FNF rules would normally have a Humvee equal to BTR, but uh, this one looks like it went through a lot of balancing and rebalancing. You can actually see that in the uh, Mission Command's change log. They actually made one for the event, so. I imagine Sergio might be running up and placing AT mines down or something, which is not a bad call. But we do have a big Op 4 team starting to move up to try to encroach on the sectors here. We have another Op 4 group coming from the north. 
And again, not a lot on defense for Op4. In fact, we have a few guys all the way in the back line potentially setting up, but the first sector for Op4 is very vulnerable, but we could very well see a large group come in and just try to assault Blue Four sector, not giving them a chance to really attack, but we don't see a lot of Blue Four rushing in to try to hit their sector. We just see Echo teams kind of going forward and setting up AT positions, so... I don't know if Blue 4 is going to continue to play this defensively and Op 4 plays aggressively. Usually games like these do favor the aggressive player. However, that could change. We do have a little bird in the sky right here. My question is, is that heck, uh, Hotel 1 or 2? Hotel 1 is back at base, so it's Hotel 2 flying out. But he doesn't have any friendlies loaded in that chopper. They're just doing some recon on the southern side. Uh, since it is a three kilometer render distance, they could literally sit at the edge of that render distance and just look at the sectors. They'd be out of Igla range. Uh, usually for Arma 3, it has to be within, I want to say, two to two and a half clicks for you to get a lock with an Igla. But they could just be trying to scout out to see where Op4 is. But if Op4 continues to play this very aggressively and Blue 4 doesn't send anything to go aggressive themselves, Op4 is just going to win by proxy. So we'll just have to see how the rest of this operation plays out. And we do have a dismount right here. Pierce looks lost. That's <laughs> that's unfortunate. But regardless, we got a BTR on the rear potentially coming around. A lot of Op 4's infantry is either dismounted at the moment or using transport trucks or UAZs. So a lot of Op 4 infantry in here. Some Op 4 infantry tied to that MRAP, though. But all the vehicles don't have any infantry atop them. So they're kind of all going autonomously on their own, whereas Blue Force Transport, if we were to look, uh, we're also seeing something similar. They're mainly taking transport. Golf 3 appears to be loaded in a uh, Bradley, though. Echo 3 appears to be in a Humvee. And then we see a good chunk of infantry with Alpha and Command also driving out, but it looks like these are potentially two separate vehicles. Yeah, so Command's in an MRAP. But Blue 4, again, are do making this really big layered defense, but I don't see that much actually going in for offense itself. So we'll see if Op4 decides to go aggressive here, but we are potentially going to have first contact between Blue 4 and Op4 as Op4 are moving in, and Blue 4 have a few men on the riverbed. We do have Iqbal with a 249. That's going to be a very good weapon to have against a squad of infantry pushing up. 200 rounds of 556 five, high fire rate. That could definitely repel or at least slow down this Op4 group, but without reinforcements to push in and assist, it's not going to get them that far. We do have some tanks and other vehicles in the back line, though, that could be routed to this position, but we'll just have to see if contact's even established. Otherwise, these guys cautiously looking around. I love how we see people, like, slow down and look down the road without people actually setting up road security on the edges just to cover. But, you know, let them do what they want to do. Pierce preparing to speed run. Pierce, I think, just called in a helicopter, actually. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. That happened. <laughs> a little slow to boot up but the helicopter booted up sure why not i'll take it <laughs> i'm just gonna write that one down that one was that one was adorable all right so you got op4 now going through this area they might not even see each other because blue four are prone moving away france is in the open running he might have seen them he might not have but the next person would be Anara right there. He's going guns up as if he did see something. He very well could have. But yeah, Iqbal running in the open right there would give them away. You might have, yeah, if no main might have seen that movement right there by Iqbal. So yeah, you see all of these guys now stopping and turning. They're now looking. I don't think these two know the number of Op4 that are out here just yet. 
You do have Echo coming up in this vehicle right here, though. This is one of the AT teams, but it does have four additional players. We could see reinforcements start to pull on this position. Meanwhile, more Op 4 dismounts all the way up here. And that's the crazy thing. If Blue 4 were to be direct on these objectives, they could actually sweep them. But because they're literally playing this out to be so defensive, they're losing an opportunity here and allowing for Op 4 to just start trickling forces in. And I'm curious to see how strategies change because this is a three life operation. So this is part of Foxtrot. They're the suppressed guys. They also carry a lot of additional explosives and they have lighter AT. They're meant to be mainly an infantry shock team, but they could do a lot of damage. But at the same time, we do have a pretty big op for group here. This is the entirety of Bravo. And these are OFCRA's heavy hitters. I mean, Zixmi, for example. But only if he can get a good angle to do a lot of flanking. And I'm going to be honest, they're in a really thin forest strip here. There's not a lot of room to maneuver. You have Hotel 2. Dr Very risky play by this Op 4 helicopter here. He's going to literally buzz a sector. And immediately he takes a stinger round. Manages to flare it off, but he needs to get out of there because that was a very silly play to make. I'm surprised he was able to flare that off, to be perfectly honest, but he's now going low and trying to evade. But kind of an interesting call there. I don't know if he was trying to get maybe Pierce up there, but, I mean, they are in the helicopter. It is a plus two, so he is trying to reinsert someone close to the front line. Bravo 1, I mean, would probably be tied to that Bravo group. So I guess they were literally going to land right next to the sector to drop those people off. That's how ballsy Op4 is treating this right now. It wasn't a recon attempt. It was an insert attempt for some weird reason. <laughs> All right, takes me opening up first. Trying to calibrate my tracers to work here. Uh, they started firing over at Foxtrot. There we go. So now we see shots, but some of them are a bit blind here. GL just went off and took out one of the Foxtrot members. Second one just came onto Ludd and knocked him unconscious. So Meown is down up here. He'll respawn in a bit because this is a three life operation. But this is the opening engagement here. So it's like Lud woke back up. Op4 is aware of this presence here, but, or excuse me, Blue4 is. But the question now becomes, how are they going to route reinforcements in? Lolo now engaging, trying to fire at someone through the waterway here. Looks like Iqbal and Anara have pulled even further back with the rest of their Bravo 1 element, relieving Foxtrot out here to dry. And now there's only two. If no main and Banks, meanwhile, they are now going to push the flank, potentially spot Lud and take him out. Lud is perfectly angled. I don't think that grenade's going to get him. It looks a bit too far inside. Yeah. They're going to think that's clear, though. But yeah, Banks is going to find this guy. One shot to the head is all it takes. And, hey, they could take these suppressed weapons, too. And it's spare AT as well. Zixmi also pushing, double tapping that one body. Wes is the only one alive. At this rate, his best bet might be to just plant a few explosives and push back to an angle he can see them and force Op4 into a fighting position here. But right off the bat, the first engagement goes to this team also. All right, so we see that some Echo Elements have also set up tow launchers. That's cute. But again, if Blue4 doesn't go for any of the sectors here, that's just going to promote Op4 to keep engaging. Meanwhile... We have a helicopter landing up here. Send it and it is holding an orbital, and there's a vehicle yeah. right next to it. Kill all goats. <laughs> Gore Child, thank you for the 66 month reason. Broski, I hope you keep enjoying the operations. I hope you do get a nice kick out of this scenario. All right, so Pierce is being routed up to this position, but I thought Pierce was part of Bravo. No, he's part of Alpha Ash and Tagelberry, part of Bravo. Okay, got it. So he's going to try to get up with that truck. 
that could have alerted these three that there is some sort of presence up here, but whether or not they'll be there to actually cut it off is anyone's guess. Op4, though, still routing forces in. Blue 4, despite, again, having a pretty solid defensive line on the macro side, micro-wise, they're not really in a lot of positions to actually cover each other. It looks like they're trying to just put a bunch of small teams out to pick up where Op4 is going to come in from and then potentially try to envelop. But we already have this incursion going on. I'm not seeing a lot of response going towards it. So that's a bit of a weird call. We got Sergio coming to the rear. Looks like we see Blue Force starting to actually respawn because I saw a few bodies flash there. That was Meowman. So it's going to take a minute or two at least for those bodies to respawn themselves. So, But they're now all the way back at their base camp and they have to be reinserted. Meanwhile, we have a little bird flying high. That is Hotel 2, though. Hotel 1 is the armed one. Very hard to see the difference of symbolism. With Hotel 1, you see the little thing in the back, which indicates that they do have the ammunition and gun pods. Meanwhile, Foxtrot, which is the Op4 Spec Ops team, is coming along the rear here. And again, the only sector they can take right now is Sector 4, whereas Blue 4 is the only one they can take is Sector 1. Op4 setting up a bit of a far tier defense here. But again, Blue 4 is not trying to be aggressive and i think that's a bit of a missed opportunity i don't know where kiri went he either merged with someone else but now it's up to ember here to command might have had a disconnect issue there but i do see a plus two in this vehicle so that's camwell and then rosie as well okay They're coming on the Sector 6. Foxtrot could have a potential to snipe out Blue 4 Command early on. They will respawn, but a few minutes to slow everything down isn't a bad call. Question is, who's going to get here first? This is the same AO we saw with OFCRA with that dedicated pack gun crew. God, those guys were awesome. Op 4's Vic is slowing down. It's going to probably dismount a few people right here. They're going to I think they're going to potentially try to, like, come into the sector and try to see if they can actually take it, but it's not going to get them anywhere. Blue 4, meanwhile, they're set up over here. You still have Wes right here. He's hunkered down, but Op 4 is now maneuvering forces around. You got this Op 4 team coming from the north, a bit of Blue 4 watching. I'm not sure if they'll spot them. And then you've got a little bit of an Op 4 three-man forward team here. Blue 4 still ran around on that side, but no direct aggression from Blue 4 yet. Yeah, so this is a three-man spec op team. Ah, they're putting AT mines down back here. So basically, they've got sappers now trying to set up AT mines in positions where they think that, you know, forces might come in. This is a bridge, though, that does have a crossing. So maybe if you, uh, later off in the game, we could see a tank blow up right here trying to use this crossing to route armor. Uh, Blue Force trying to use that crossing to uh, move armor across. So not a bad call there. Op4, meanwhile, starting to come in. Blue4 digging a few trenches and looking around. CQC-wise, again, that 249, which Iqbal has, could be a real game-changer here. Because there's not a lot of cover. It's all just concealment, and bullets will easily penetrate through these bushes. But it's a matter of, is Wonder going to look right and see these guys digging? He does not. Does anyone else look right and see that? Uh, Lolo might have. And I think Wonder just did. So if they had a GL... Placing a GL in this position would eliminate both of them immediately. Now this entire group's going to slow down. Harrington pulls his binos out and immediately takes shots. Iqbal panic fires. Panic grenades as well. Lolo takes a grenade, goes prone. That's going to detonate in his face. He sits up just a little bit, utilizing the smoke from that grenade to uh, pull away. One blue four guy gets picked off on the rooftop. That was their marksman. Ah, oh, that's a bad call there. I get he's on an elevated side. Harrington and Iqbal also go down immediately. And this OFCRA team keeps slaughtering small blue four groups. Now the question is, are Iqbal and Harrington going to wake back up? Or can NASA get up there and potentially double tap them early on? He doesn't know that they're down. And France is the only one up. And he is going to try to pull back. Wes still looking around. Ash still trying to go in. Sergio seems a bit lost. Maybe he just went out to put some AT rounds in certain spots. But again... Op4 opens up with a very powerful start. More grenades going off. I think that one got caught in the entrenchment here. Otherwise, it should have double-tapped the bodies. More grenades going in. 
But again, ending up on the front of the trench, I think that's NASA throwing them. You gotta remember though, in fights like these, you always wanna burn the grenades first because if you kill the enemy, you can go up and get those grenades and, you know, rinse and repeat. On games where it's very easy to pick up grenades, usually it's the first thing you wanna do in a firefight when you're not fighting a, you know, more than a one-on-one. -on -one. GL rounds coming over as well. He's got to be careful not to hurt each other. Harrington's body isn't spotted. They spot France. He tries to put some shots out, but is quickly repelled. And we have this additional four-man team coming in. So France trying to put some GLs out here. It strafes Kremit a little bit, but he is going to move. Now we've got Op4 pushing these positions. I got to wonder if they took any of the weapons... That blue four had lost in that section. I guess it would be this four-man team that would have taken it, but I don't... Nope. Yep, there it is. So taking some of Foxtrot's weapons is definitely a good call there. What did Zixmi grab? That looked like a suppressed M4 platform. No scope, though. But if they take that marksman scope and they give it to Zixmi, that could be one of the most dangerous things in the game. Zixmi with a marksman rifle... Uh, or a marksman scope on a suppressed rifle. I mean, that is a game changer. France, meanwhile, running back. Trying to stick in the cover. And Bog, thank you for the raid, buddy. How are you doing? Let me know if you need another birthday up. <laughs> uh, I've got a Stargate itch right now, and uh, a lot of people are uh, coming out of the wet work to help me out with that. Regardless, Harrington still unconscious. I think he's going to stay bleeding out there. Someone might check and find his body later. But we've got Ash coming in. Wes might have spotted him and is still staying low. But beyond that, it's hard to tell. We still have, I think that's Ash coming up. Yep. Tired? Yeah, me too, buddy. Me too. And France staying in a bush. We do hear armor coming up, though. So Blue 4 is now going to respond with an Abrams. But Op4 is going to be able to hear that tank coming. They do have RPGs. If they could get behind that Abrams and knock out the engine block... That would be absolutely fatal. And it looks like no one's going to be able to get up to uh, that marksman's body. And then you got Ivno Main staying back here. I think he's checking just to see if there's anything else here. With these guys also, they do have some sort of backpack. So they might have some sort of uh, Cormit launcher or other AT weapon to potentially deal with that tank. But that's going to require some setup. Lolo pulling out that RPG. Again, with that VL Warhead, it's only going to be really effective if they hit the engine block. But it looks like that tank is now pulling back instead. Interesting call there. We have a... Okay, so we have an up-armored car coming up that's going to have more members of Bravo coming in and give them some transport because op Force realized that so far they've been able to incur into Blue 4 territory. They have received contact, but they've been able to perfectly eliminate that contact. I think they've uh, killed six people. And it looks like Harrington just bled out. So, six kills, no deaths. I mean, that's a great start for these guys. And it looks like they're staying low and hunkering down right now because the tank... I think drove out or is potentially changing positions here, but they got to be careful about that. What I'm a little worried about, we got two AT guys here, two sappers, and this vehicle is driving forward. Might end up driving in the river if it's not careful. That is exactly what might happen. And I think they realized the tree, hitting the tree made them realize, oh, what are you doing? They just... Well, Op4 just lost a gas because they were unable to read the map. <laughs> so I think they're just going to swim across now. Uh, Rana is on the... Um, the multi, by the way. So if you want to see another POV. We got some Op4 trying to swim the river here. They got to be careful, though, because sometimes you get stuck in the river. But it looks like they're slowly making it across. All right. And then you have Company HQ vehicle driving back there, trying to route additional forces in, but not much is happening. All you're having are a few stragglers being left around. Blue 4 rerouted the tank onto this side. They're trying to watch these open areas to see if Op 4 is going to move over to the sectors itself, but they've just been kind of in the middle. I think they're meant to be a distraction for main forces to come in and actually hit the sector, and so far they've been proving quite effective. Meanwhile, we have a T90 in play. On the northern side, 
And this three-man team is definitely looking for it, but they have a tow launcher, and they are more than ready to try to take it out. Infantry has gone around this AT position, so that T90 is going to have a false sense of security, and this tow uh, team has a big opportunity here to eliminate one of Op Force three tanks early on. But right now, they're just going to play it safe because I think the tank is still going to be looking forward and just waiting for orders to push at this point. Meanwhile, Blue 4 still that three-man team. They're looking around right here. Op 4 keeping this defensive team around. Again, if Blue 4 was trying to incur into Sector 1, I think they'd be able to actually get an opportunity to take the Sector un... Uh, gosh, without contest, but... Rest of Op 4's force coming in. This is a very dangerous group of infantry right here. Blue 4, yeah, they've got some guys on Sector 5. They've got a tank overwatching. I think that tank's going to be able to potentially stop this push. And right off the bat, we're seeing smokes being thrown. And suppressive fire coming in. So this Op 4 attack is going to stop immediately. Wonder drops a partial mag, takes a hit. But... Yeah, no, their only choice is going to be to smoke this and then try to run over on this side. That's going to lead them into Echo 4. AT, uh, excuse me, tank round goes in. As they're firing the front area here. No casualties on Op 4 just yet. But the tank is just blindly firing into the smoke. And Op 4, they're now going to go a few... Uh, tree lines back, potentially run into some more Blue 4 infantry. Looks like the... Yep, so the reinforcement wave of Foxtrot is coming in on the previous position, so a few more Spec Ops guys. Gotta be careful, though, because if they get killed again this early on, they're gonna be on their last life, because this is a three-life event. Otherwise, Blue 4 tank is just suppressing that side. Not really much that they're gonna be able to get there. But the smoke was also thrown as a partial distraction just to keep that tank pinned instead. But we could have Sergio come back and do something here. He is suppressed. I don't think he realizes just how many Op 4 are around here. Instead, he's just kind of looking around and trying to see where people are to engage. He could get one or two pickoffs, but this Op 4 team is so massive. And there's just such limited avenues of movement. If Sergio knew what was here, maybe he could hide in a bush, put a few explosives down, and really time this attack. But I think he just sighted in on a few of them. And he immediately starts shooting. Kremit panics and starts firing towards the front of the group. NASA now honing in on those suppressed shots. Sergio immediately trying to pull away. Nasta loses his limited angle on Sergio. Someone else spots him, though. That's Harana. It's Harna, not Harana. It's because I'm getting their name confused with another person that's pronounced that way. So Harna engaging. Grenades going back and forth. Nasa manages to knock Sergio on his feet. Or Sergio, excuse me. Grenade does a little bit of damage. More suppressed shots coming in. Tackleberry, I think, just got picked off. Yeah, so he was one of the late reinserts, gets uh, picked off by some of the suppressed shooters on the side. Now this Op 4 group's in a little bit of trouble. Zixmi, though, taking that suppressed rifle and firing it back. We have an AA launch in the rear. That is a KA-52 trying to hunt down Hotel 2, which is the transport. This Op 4 team might have been the AA that actually fired. I don't see anything on them though, so unsure of that, but we are hearing stuff in the distance engaging. Meanwhile, Sergio still trying to hold. Uh, now Bluck and Lolo are pushing him. Did NASA get killed off? NASA did get killed off, trying to get Sergio on his own. Sergio holding against Lolo. He pulls back. Very good tactics by Sergio here. He's also making Op 4 burn all their grenades on him. And that's going to put these guys in a negative deficit. So when they have their next engagement, they're going to be forced to utilize their guns rather than grenades. Now the rest of the Op 4 team are distracted by the men on Overwatch back here. Zixmi is trying to get a pick off with his sight. Man's using an iron and immediately gets shot and pulls back. Wonder grabbed a 249. He's now pulling back as well. But the force is literally divided amongst hitting so many different areas. I think we just lost a blue four guy, though. And that would be Lud. Yep, he crossed the river, and it looks like he got taken out. 
but we have a pretty tough fight going here. Lolo gets killed by Sergio as he tries to advance. Sergio doing a great job of baiting Op4 to come up to him one at a time. He's capitalizing on his opponent's aggression here and the fact that they're trying to trickle in on him while this Overwatch team keeps these guys separated because some of them are going to hold to, en uh, to engage that Overwatching element. He's literally running a train on Op4 here, causing them to go up one at a time, but I think his luck's about to run out because Bluck is starting to hone in on his position because Sergio has run out of maneuvering room on the rear. Bluck's still going to play this cautiously. But Sergio doing a great job of just watching this uh, area here. Might have spotted Depso for a second. But Bluck, I think, is about to... Uh, Makes Sergio's luck run out. Will Bluck spot him on the left check? He does. Sergio turns around hearing him come around, but Bluck's able to drop him. The masturbator. <laughs> So Op4 took, I think, three casualties on that exchange. Still uh, at a positive there in terms of ratio, but Op4, or excuse me, Blue4 lost two, Lud there, Sergio also died. So a bit of an even fight there. Op4 still has a pretty decent lead on the kill feed. And then we still have this T9. Oh, the T90 is now advancing on the tree line. Still staying behind those trees. Toe Launcher still potentially has an opportunity. Infantry still bypassing. We've got some more small teams, though, that could potentially stop those Op4 elements from coming in as well. No Blue 4 aggression at all into Op4 territories. It is all Op4 just trying to push into Blue 4 instead. Interesting calls. Meowin pushing up, trying to get some shots. Staying on the river is up a kill. Trying to get Bluck, but can't seem to line up the shot. We see a few hits here and some morphine used by Meowne. And Banks gets a beautiful headshot. After crossing the uh, water, the Wiva, and uh, coming up and lining that shot up quite well. So I'd imagine these guys, their new plan, excuse me, uh, Night Vision, since they were cut off by that tank, is to potentially come up the river and just hit the sector. I'm going to be honest, right now they are Op 4's only real hope here because everything else is either on a different line coming in or what. And I think Op 4 might be paranoid that Blue 4 is prepping some kind of attack. But instead, it looks like these guys are going offensive and trying to rack up kills. And that's also not a bad call because they can pick up more suppressed rifles. They're pretty much farming Foxtrot at this point. But uh, now Depso has one. And especially if you're trying to be an incursion team, getting suppressed weaponry that is the enemy's weaponry is a very good call for that. And I think Blue 4 is going to have no choice but to continue to push on the angle. But at this rate, this game could very well end up at a stalemate as well. Op 4 pushing their engine up. Does Anderson have the toe lined up? He does not. Tank is now pushing and is instead going north. So he's quickly trying to pick it up. I don't think he's going to be able to catch it in time. He can't fire it from within trees because if he guides it in, it's going to screw up the pathing of it. He might try right here. But he's got to hope the tank stops at that point. And it does not. It's going to continue on. So lost opportunity there. We've got... Dream and Hotel uh, G Leg is flying around. They might go hunting for that tank instead with their aircraft. But yeah, now you got Op4 backtracking where they started, and they're looking for more Blue 4 to take out. Meanwhile, this three man team has been planting AT mines in the back line. And again, they're hoping that Blue 4 gets pushed back to this sector, and then the AT mines that they placed will then detonate and take out any reinforcing Blue 4 armor. So I can tell that Op4 made a really big plan here to eventually hit all three sectors. Blue4, I have no idea what their plan was because they're purely playing defense. I'm not seeing any sort of offensive capability. What I'm thinking is Blue4's plan was to potentially drain Op4's infantry to force them on the defensive instead. And then just bounce back and kill them all. But 
especially on a two to two and a half hour mission, it normally doesn't play out that way. You have to be aggressive. West, meanwhile, trying to catch Banks out of position. He does not. He's still on his first life. And he is up a kill, so he's being incredibly cautious. He's gotten a bit lucky that Op 4's decided to route back here. But I think that's because this Op 4 team doesn't know what to do because their main route was cut off by a tank. And without any proper support, they can't do much. So I think they think that they're pulling a lot of Blue 4 attention over here to, again, allow for a lar another force to come in from a different angle. But it's so hard to tell with what Op 4 is doing here. Uh, it feels like Op4 is almost stagnated as well because they're trying to figure out if Blue4 is going to make any sort of attack play. And the fact that they haven't really run into any other Blue4 anywhere else is making them incredibly cautious. Which is why I don't think you see Op4 committing so, anything yeah, because they're still staying on the back ready to pull away if they find out Blue4 have somehow bypassed them. And this is making for a bit of a slower game, unfortunately. We're 50 minutes in, 77 minutes remain. like a slow-paced OFCRA game. I think uh, JoJo hears Banks. Banks panic firing. JoJo runs out of ammo. Wes also tries to cover uh, JoJo there. Op4 have no idea what they're firing at at the moment. Wes now shooting at JoJo. Banks folded in to do a little bit of medical. And Wonder is still blindly suppressing that previous angle. Banks is now trying to look around. Grenades are going in. West now firing over at Block. But now Wes is taking a multitude of fire and gets knocked out by Kremit. Could still wake back up, but I doubt it. Banks is going to run right in front of Jojo, and Jojo taps him. Very unlucky for Banks. Ibnomain turns around only to get... Um, <laughs> Ibnomain on the rear of uh, Jojo. Jojo turns around, gets headshotted. Wes receiving some suppressing fire. No double taps, though. Could still wake back up. Partially concealed under this bush, but Major Khan's attempting to flank around as well. But again, that was more of an even trade. Banks went down, but they were able to take out Wes and uh, JoJo. But again, in terms of the time this is taking, <laughs> with the amount of players on, it's a very big snail's pace. Regardless, Murphy red on Redding T's position. But ironically, since Blue 4 right here... That's making Op4 go on alert right where there is an uh, Blue 4 group. So, Astro trying to give some return fire. Hold on. Kabubi face is down. Oh, I think he got armored on a turret at Sector 5 because we see a turret knocked down next to him. That's funny. So, Op4 pulling back. Against the superior... Uh, okay. It took me a second, and I remembered, wait, this is Pierce's group. They do some pretty interesting calls. So they're pulling back. Another three-man team is coming in. They've got a four-man team back here. If anything, this team is going to want to come over here and try to sandwich whatever is engaging them, but these guys are going to get sandwiched instead, and then they're just going to... Okay. They don't know that, of course, but it's a weird... It's a weird call. If you have a force behind there... Maybe they're pulling back to try to bait them to come up so it keeps them exposed and causes them to maneuver up. I That's the only thing I can think of. But again, I doubt anyone's going to be watching rear security because they feel comfortable that they've pulled back like this, and that's just going to open them up from getting shot in the back. Do you have the T90 that successfully come around, though? And we have a helicopter standoff. As I don't think the little birds realize there's a KA-52 behind it. <laughs> you can play the Jaws theme to this. 
I think they just noticed they're immediately diving. The KA-52 should be able to outrun the Little Bird, though. I, it should have the more powerful engine. KA-52 has a GAU-19 pod, and uh, I'm not sure if it has this auto cannon, but I know it also has an HE rocket pod. But that is quite funny. Tank is now setting up all the way back here, giving the tow team another opportunity to run up and hit it. At this point, they should just carry the tow up to the damn thing and hit it point blank. But because they might only have the GAU-19 pod, the KA-52 might only engage at close range. Meanwhile, looking at the macro of the map here, Blue Force partially pushed up, Op4 now sweeping on the rear. They're now trying to do their sandwich. He knows as soon as he fires, he's gonna give himself away. But this helicopter can't hear the KA-52, its engine's too loud when it's that close. This is the funniest thing. Little Bird immediately turns around. Does it notice the KA-52 coming up on it? There's no way in hell. So G Legs is on the left side, Dreams in the camera. If you know to look for it, you can hear the KA-52. Wait, why did the KA-52 turn around? What? The KA-52 got spooked and backed off. What the <laughs> Okay. All right, Blue 4 now pushing some of the Op 4 guys, knocking them out on this fight. Op 4 have a man down. They have a KIA, uh, I think. Yep, T. And someone else just got blown up by that grenade. Nuzzy now alone over here. Op 4 now trying to get this flanking attack in, but will it be enough? Toe team now slowly walking the toe over to where that tank is. And this Op4 team now going down the riverbed, going into Sector 6 for some weird reason. Again, they can't capture Sector 6. They have to go for Sector 4. We see a uh, member of Blue 4 trying to knock out this Spetsna member. Op4, meanwhile, on the rear. Henry knocking out. Astro Cloak also gets spotted and taken out. But now you got Pig on the flank of this Op4 element, and Goose gets knocked out. However, Pig immediately starts taking returning fire from Pierce. We have a Bradley coming in, followed by a tank, but we do have Henry here with AT. He's gonna start hearing it. He might turn around and get that uh, weapon ready because we do have a Bradley right behind them. Bradley's can tank a good chunk of AT fire. He's gonna have to try to hit that RPG right in the front where the engine is. The issue is when they hit the rear of it where the crew compartment is and don't get any kills. Now you can hear that Abrams coming up even though the Bradley's turned its engine off. This might also cause the T-90 to push it. And Malin, it looks like he has to fix his tow launcher. We just saw an RPG fire out. It was very short and uh, we see return fire there. Henry misplays that a little bit. We see HE rounds firing. That's going to have to force the T-90 to come in at this point. Meanwhile, looks like Ember got engaged by some of the Foxtrot Commandos here, and that is Ground Command under threat now. And nothing is around to assist. We do have a Little Bird potentially flying in. GL's going. Cats pushing up with Cullis. And there goes Ground Command. So Ground Command out for a few minutes as we have these other major attacks going on. Op4 definitely losing this fight up here. T90 gets hit by something. That was an AGM from the Little Bird. I think two AGMs just came down and smacked her. And now this gives time for this three-man team to come up and line its toes up. I really don't understand why the KA-52 backed off from a Little Bird. That is the weirdest thing to see.
Literally the little bird turning around made the KA-52 panic somehow. Just, I love it. All right, Pig and Pierce getting into a duel here. Pierce getting some really nice body and headshots there. Look at the amount of times he hit him, though. Now you got the KA-52 flying overhead, doing a rocket run, and immediately gets shot out of the sky! <laughs> Imagine knowing where the vehicles are lined up and then charging the vehicles head on. Toe launcher just fired and double tapped that tank again. Oh my god. That. A little too confident in that run, but that's a lesson into not charging enemy ground vehicles head on, especially when they have an auto cannon. And look at that, they're just gonna put all of their AT into this T90. As this man, as Nolik is panic repairing it, at this point, he's going to take a tow missile straight to the face. Come on, hit him with the tow. I swear it's not against the Geneva Convention. Hit him with the tow, Anderson. You know you want to. He's going to keep hitting the damn thing with the tow launcher, and these chuckleheads are going to keep repairing it in a panic. I don't know if it's a toe or toe too, but nope. Now, even if they repair it, it's not gonna be able to go because the fuel just caught fire. You okay, buddy? Ooh, yeah. I don't think he's okay. Regardless, Blue 4 have a pretty solid edge on this fight. Op 4 starting to send forces up. We have a BMP firing into the town from the north. Looks like they're trying to suppress down this street and all these other buildings, give covering fire for Op 4 to move in. And then you got this Op 4 team all the way back here now on this sector, but they're not going to be able to do anything. So they're pretty much out of the game for at least the next 20 minutes. But again, it's weird. We have a lot of Op 4 infantry around the back sector here. I guess just to ambush any ground vehicles coming in to essentially spawn camp. But I think Blue 4 has the manpower to at least hold one of their sectors. So it's it's a really weird call here. Henry, meanwhile, has snuck up to where the four blue men... Three Blue 4 men are now. And he immediately gets knocked out by Blaze. So looking back, tank's completely cooked off at this point. And Blue 4 just have so much on a tier 2 defense, nothing attacking. If Blue 4 were to send one Humvee around, they would get a they would get the sector. And we might see Echo 2 now move in to capitalize on that, but it's these are such weird calls today. So it's down to two Blue 4 guys. Op 4 is starting to encroach and surround because the vehicle support has been ordered to back off after killing that helicopter. I'm going to be honest, though. Helicopters in PvP, for FNF at least, are usually useless. They only engage each other and cancel each other out. But we did see the Blue 4 one get a successful tank kill. But with how FNF mismanages their vehicles, I'm really surprised I just watched a SAW Gunner beat out an, a or, excuse me, an AK-47 beat out a SAW Gunner. And then Zero just got that kill, but he is the last one left, and there's three dudes around. Never mind, he just got grenaded. Caster curse. So the Bradley's now trying to come up and assist, but there's not really much left up here. But at, we're seeing no aggression from Blue 4, and that's what's going to cost them here. Because even if Blue 4 starts heavily countering everything Op 4 does, Op 4 still has so many forces in the zone that they can eventually route to the sector. And so far... Blue Force definitely won the equipment fight. Op 4 is down a helicopter, one of their only armed helicopters. Uh, they're down one of their three T90s, but Blue 4 are definitely winning the body war. Uh, or Op 4 winning the body war. I would say, I think Op 4 at this point are up by at least double digits in terms of kill counts. I'm hearing more distant autocannon fire. I think the Bradley is now routing over. And the tank... 
is also firing, I think, at the BMP, but that was a very close to hitting the Bradley. So now we have these guys. They might try to come up over here and get on the rear of Blue 4. But no Blue 4 unit has actually gone past the sectors and in between the territory. Meanwhile, you have a bunch of Op 4 incursion teams just trying to spawn camp at this point. Which is a bit of a dirty tactic, but at the same time, again, if Blue 4 was just being aggressive with what they had, they they could easily win this. Looks like Echo is dismounting over here instead. Look at where this auto rifleman has positioned himself. <laughs> I can't. I can't make this shit up. <laughs> hey, look at this Bradley. Hey, look, it's Yanni Finn. Oh, that's AT, and it just hit the front of the Bradley. And the Bradley did not really give a damn. That was a direct hit on the front, too, that should have knocked the engine. Yanni told me today he wanted to try to beat Iander's record of uh, 1,264 meters. Bradley's now driving around wondering, hey, I just got hit with AT over here. Let me drive back. And they get hit with AT again. And once again, the Bradley did not give a shit. And now it's panic firing forward. More AT hits it. That's three AT rounds. Malin killed the commander on top. So, this is one of the biases when I see US versus uh, Russia done. Let's put this in the perspective here. <clears throat> this just took three AT rounds and doesn't even appear damaged. Three RPG-32 rounds hit the front of it, which are AT medium anti-tank rounds, and it did nothing. That is one of the biases between putting Bradleys against BMPs in Arma 3, which is why I don't generally like to see it. Well, no, no, no. What's that? That was to destroy it. The first round still disabled the tank. The Bradley's still driving after taking three AT rounds. If we flipped it and it was a T90, then it would have been disabled on the first shot. Still operational. They're shooting at... There's so many things wrong with what just happened. I'm not even going to explain. <laughs> Stop it. Did Op4 just throw? I'm hoping Op4 just threw that grenade because now I'm losing my sanity here. I don't even see someone getting out to repair the Bradley. That's how I... Okay. No aggression on Blue Force still. Op 4 now sending this force over to Sector 5. Aaron comes on the flank and gets both of them. Nicholas also opens up. There goes the two sentries. And at this rate, we only have four people up here, and they're firing now over at this AT team. Got the BMP coming up. Bradley pushing forward again. How much more AT is it going to take? Because so far, it's eaten quite a bit. <laughs> they keep... I think they keep seeing the dead commander and thinking they can shoot him again. Who has the AT with this group? There's no AT. Oh. 
That's awkward. Now we have an auto cannon opening up. Op 4 are going to be forced to bypass this vehicle then. There's nothing they can do about it. Because Matt, I mean, Matt tried. Matt put three AT rounds in and it did nothing. <laughs> oh my god. That was still quite funny. All right, so Op 4, we got the team back here that could potentially get in. We do have, I swear to God, if you drive into the water again. They're going to drive into the freaking water. Well, they stopped themselves that time. There's Somewhere around here is another, yeah. <laughs> Super close to the other vehicle that flooded its engine. They would have gone two for two. So Nemesis has an angle on these guys, but they duck, so he is unable to line up the headshots. He did get one hit, though. <laughs> now we have a tank overwatching from the back line. By all reason, Op4 should be able to take this sector. It's just the Bradley, for whatever reason, just doesn't want to die. It's too stubborn. I just find it interesting that these guys are lining up to hit this objective, but look at the amount of infantry defense we have on Sector 5. Honestly, I, I think Blue 4 Command has misread how this AO is supposed to be done. Just have a team defend this, and then everything else send to your opponent. If I were in command, I would do a 2 to 1 ratio, where 2 thirds of my force would be on offense and 1 third of my force would be on defense but I'd be proactive in trying to also lock down enemy forces in the middle. But Mito and Lurch picking mail off. Because you also have to remember, if you take Sector 1, Sector 4 can no longer be taken. They have to take Sector 1 back. So you turn the fighting over here, and based off of how Op Force played it, you could just blitz through everything. And that's the other crazy thing. If Blue 4 were to rush a vehicle over, they could stop the entirety of Op 4's attack because it would force Op4 to pull back, but I'm going to be honest, by then I think Op4 would lose all their sectors. And then we've got reinforcements from Blue4 firing down at Op4 elements here. Oh, we just had a member of Op4 get knocked out. That was one of the PKP gunners. And we hear another... I'm hearing a different auto cannon firing, but it could very well be this one. And I think it's getting super comfortable now that it's taken three AT shots. Blue 4 Command was Curie and somebody else. Uh, now it's on to Ember Rose. But I don't know what happened to Curie. That is a grenade and it actually knocks out Primal Reacher. BMP2 trying to come in to provide assistance. And then Op4 have stolen that one Humvee and are trying to move in. Now, chat, I am curious what you guys think. Uh, I want to say in 30 minutes, I'm going to ask you guys for your own feedback on this AO. First off, I do, you know, again, have some concerns about the Bradley. I'd rather see, like, a mirror match of similar assets. If they wanted to model it off of the current events, I'd say Ukraine versus Russia is pretty even in terms of you can equip both sides with AK style vehicles, Soviet style vehicles, AK style vehicles, AK styled weaponry, Soviet styled vehicles. Nemesis is coming in, cleaning up one, doesn't double tap mail, but might get that in the reload. As you can tell, my brain's running a little too quickly. Looks like mail was uh, being bandaged up, but hasn't woken up. So Nemesis might not think to double tap. But I agree. I think this AO is way too big. It's giving way too much space for people to move around, and it's just... The fighting isn't as condensed. I mean, we're over halfway through the time limit, and now we're starting to see the first sector actually get hit here. So I think for a 60v60, definitely condensing the AO would help a bit more. Something like Kunda's Afghanistan. I want an AK style vehicle. Sounds dope, yeah. Ha <laughs> ha!
He's trying to maneuver the gunner to the vehicle. God damn nemesis. He's literally company command and he's trying to avoid a Bradley. Bradley didn't see him hop into that next vehicle. And now the Abrams has also pulled in. Because Op4 hasn't routed any AT into this AO, but we might see this group bring some in. But they are taking the sector because they do have the number advantage at the moment. So Tank is now on the outskirts trying to assist Sector being taken. There's only two guys left in that AO. We need to see Echo come in at this point, but I think they're too worried about this open field and they don't want to try to route in. I know, Gore Child, if we want to talk technicalities, but you can, they still use gear on the same sides. But, Brig, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for the raid. What were you playing? Uh, we just heard a tow fire off and disable that BMP-2. Uh, no, it was a Moz. All right. Wheaton giving a second shot. It misses. How do you miss it when it's static but hit it when it was moving? Semper's round's completely overranged. Turret has to be completely disabled at this point, and now it's going to cook off. And again, the idea wasn't to, you know, say, okay, well, Ukrainian is really cool assets. You could use them there. It's to literally keep them even. That way, an RPG versus one side's BMP is going to give the exact same properties as the other side's RPG on their BMP, you know? No three free hits that time. Yeah, it only took one. And then they missed. <laughs> That's my point. Meanwhile, this Bradley just doesn't give a damn. The only reason their com uh, commander died was because he was turned out. Sector still being taken. Abrams driving around could end up right in front of this AT crew. If they even have rockets, they should, though. At least have one left. We got an MI-8 on the rear. Bradley's going to be two in the tree line to notice it. Oh, but if it had the gun turned out. Crewman sees it. He's trying to adjust him. Might still get the shot. Nope. Ah, he's going to lose the angle. Gunner got too twitchy there. But they had an opportunity to line the gun up and get it right in the rear. And an MI-8 is going to easily go down. Meanwhile, the freaking Op4 Commando group that's done so much is now going to try to attack the rear of this sector. And we could very well see this sector get taken, these guys bump in, and then these guys bump in. And it's going to be a potential GG there. If not, it's still going to be an Op 4 victory because Blue 4 hasn't done anything aggressive. And it's a shame because they have the tankier vehicles to do it. Anyway, BMP cooking off in the distance. And funny enough, we have Azariah running up. He opens up with a grenade perfectly on that vehicle. That immediately makes these guys freak out. Azariah running in uh, with the vehicle crew, making Patriot run. He's going to be right behind him. <laughs> Patriot tries opening up on Semper and immediately gets dropped. Azariah needs to be careful, though. The other two went in a different direction. They could be overwatching this side. So if he wants to be aggressive, he needs to stick on the outer tree line. He gets spotted and knocked out. Still, that was a funny chase down. Nick now trying to get the hit, but with that PP-2000, he's not going to have the range in the same way that that uh, 5.56 rifle does. Tank now routing around. Sector only about half taken because a big amount of blue four came in to reinforce. A 240. They're hearing the doors open in this building now. 
Now it's just a matter of who can bring reinforcements into this AO quicker. <clears throat> we see Blue Force sending forces. Op4 trying. But some are just getting caught on the outside instead of pushing in. They're proning through this open field instead of just following the tree line up. That's so... These are such weird calls. Azariah wakes up only to get engaged by a tank. Meanwhile, Peter going with his gut. M240! Oh my god. Did you see the barrel stick through the door like that? That was the craziest play I've seen in a hot second. Literally barrel through the door, pull the trigger, you win. Oh, there is some broken stuff on Blue Force side, that's for sure. They're shooting all the way over at Echo when these chuckleheads need to be coming into the AO. They're an AA team, too. And you hear the Abrams now coming up to them. It's because Op4 has all their stuff in so many different areas, but Blue Force is actually being smart and pulling all their stuff in. We could still see a Blue Force counterattack at the end. Get Op4. That's the crazy thing about this. Is that Blue Force is at least being quick to respond. Little bit of desync just hit. All right, looks like it's catching back up. I don't know. I mean, I definitely agree with what's that, but if you guys have additional suggestions, make the AO smaller. This one was way too big. It allowed for way too much reform. I'm going to be honest, literally just in this like top right of the map itself would have been a good call. Have one spawn on the top left, one on the bottom right, and just do like objectives linearly. You can't always do that on every single map, but you can make it work relatively. And then we got a yellow chain there. Oof. Oh, the game just entirely... Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Something, I think, just hiccuped and immediately killed the server. Now, here's how I know it's not... Let me actually just check real quick. Yeah, so... Something just happened and caused the server to hiccup and immediately crash. Probably some sort of random status access violation. Uh, if it was a DDoS, it would have been a little more gradual. And also because the server's tied to the team speak, the team speak would also be freaking out. Because, uh, you know, the 506 stuff has been getting DDoS, for example. So I want to just clarify how we know what it's what compared to other stuff. But, yeah, no, something just outright killed the server there. And it's a shame because this was going pretty well, but... Unfortunately, uh, it wasn't enough for the server to handle. I'm going to be honest, Roche is kind of a, you know, it's a bigger, a bit of a laggier map too. I think, you know, a smaller AO would have definitely helped contain everything. I liked what I saw. It's just, I think there was way too much map space for people to look at it and go super grandiose. Oh, it's always been like that, Ilbanak. But no, this was just a crash. Uh, probably a status access violation by something. Uh, I know, for example, the RHS vehicles like Ural's, T90s, and Abrams, sometimes if you hear them, uh, it causes a sound glitch that will crash you out. That one still hits me from time to time. But I'm not going to, uh, since this was over halfway and it already started late, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. Reach out to Razor, Ghost Wolf, see who might want to help me with some Daisy from like 5 to 7.30. But otherwise, yeah. All right. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm going to refund the prediction. This was still fun to see. I would love to see them refine it, but it needs to be a smaller AO. Definitely on that. Balance, I mean, yeah. The Bradley taking three RPG rounds and just laughing was definitely funny. If it was in the back of the Bradley, I would understand that. But all three of those hits were in the front of it, where the engine is, and the Bradley just went, nah, fam. <laughs> 
comma Bradley. I ain't dying to that <laughs> discount Russian bullshit. <laughs> anyway, see you guys later. Have a good one.